Hey everyone, I'm Cassie. Thanks for joining me again. So today I'm going to be picking up uh, on the story that I recorded last week. Uh, last week I read the first three chapters of the Boxcar Children, the Mystery Book Store. So today I'm going to read a couple more chapters starting with chapter four. If you haven't already listened to the first three chapters, go listen to those first and then come back and listen to these. Okay, so let's get started. Chapter 4, Snooping Around These book tables are as well organized as a library, Miss Chase told the Aldens the next day. I'm glad to see Violet reading one of her fairy tales because some of these books have been sitting in the shop unread for decades. Henry laid down an armful of books on a cell table. We're almost done, he said. Now we can clean up the inside of the bookstore before the painters come. Jessie checked each table to make sure the books were in alphabetical order. She turned to Miss Chase. I hope you make lots of money on these dusty old books. Then you can order some brand new ones for your brand new shop. All that's left is to hire someone who knows a lot about these books to help me price them, Miss Chase said. I do hope someone will answer my newspaper ad. How come you didn't? Jessie started to say before she stopped. She didn't want to be nosy. Hire Ezra Bendry, Miss Chase said, finishing Jessie's question. I'd like nothing better, but Ezra goes out of his way to say he doesn't like mystery books or the people who write them. He's a strange one. He doesn't really read the words, the words in the books. He just looks at how they're made, not what they say. They could be shoes or hats or loaves of bread. I wish some of these books were loaves of bread, Benny said when he heard this. What if Mr. Bendry answers your ad? Violet asked Miss Chase. Why, I guess I'd give him the job, Miss Chase answered. Maybe now that Mrs. Post doesn't stand between us, I can start fresh with Ezra. Everyone was surprised to hear someone trying to open the courtyard door. That's funny, Violet said when she went to see who was there. I put a sign up saying we're closed until Saturday. But before she could unlock the door, Violet felt to push open. Why, Rex, Miss Chase said when she saw who was there. What brings you here? Mr. Phillips' answer was a frown. He shifted from foot to foot and dropped his keys. Violet put down her copy of Tom Thumb to pick them up. I've got them, Mr. Phillips snapped. Stepping on his keys, he picked them up and handed Violet her book. Where'd you get this book anyway? It's a present from me, Rex, Miss Chase said. I'm sorry, but the shop isn't open for business yet. Mr. Phillips explained his visit. Since I'm an old friend of Mabel's too, I wanted to look around before the sale. I expected to be the owner by now, but you seem to have arranged to get the bookstore for yourself. Miss Chase blushed at Mr. Phillips' rude remark. I didn't arrange anything of the kind, Rex. Mr. Alden is renting me the bookstore. I expect to pay him back shortly. I certainly don't have to explain things further. All right, all right, Mr. Phillips said. I just want to take a quick look. Miss Chase stepped down between Mr. Phillips and the book tables. I'm sorry, Rex. The Aldens have put these books in perfect order for my sale. Everything is all set to be priced. Our sale starts Saturday morning at 9 sharp. I'll see you then. With that, Miss Chase guided Mr. Phillips out. What a difficult man. He always pestering Mabel Post, too, Miss Chase explained. The only thing they had in common was stamp collecting. Rex was convinced Mabel had a valuable stamp she had hidden away. In any case, Rex already bought all of her albums. What more could he want? I'm sure glad he left, Henry said. Now we can get started washing down these shelves before the painters get here. Good idea, Miss Chase said. With all this pitching in, we'll be done in a snap. They got right to work. Henry started with the top shelves while the younger children washed the bottom ones. Benny was full of questions. Are the painters painting the walls black? Can we keep those cobwebs up on the ceiling? Maybe the shop should look like a haunted house. Miss Chase laughed. I don't know about black walls and cobwebs, Benny, but I love Violet's idea to decorate the store windows and walls with black paper footprints. Oh my, there's someone staring in the window. The children turned around. It's Mr. Bendry, Henry said. I bet he wants to snoop around like he did yesterday. I told him to come back on Saturday. Miss Chase opened the bookshop door. Come on, come in, come in, Ezra, she said, giving the grumpy man a big smile. Can I help you with anything? I'd like to speak with you privately, Olivia, Mr. Bendry said as he gave the Aldens a disapproving look. All these are my helpers, Ezra, she explained. This is Jessie, Violet, and Benny. Henry told me you met yesterday. I've been so busy, I must have left the door unlocked. Yes, why, yes, that, that's right, Mr. Bendry said. Anyway, I'm here for the job of pricing the books. Nobody knows more about pricing in these parts than I do. You couldn't go wrong since I'm already familiar with most of the books from Mabel's shop. I'd like that, Miss Chase said. 
Well, these children can't do everything, Mr. Bendry said. Anyway, children and old books don't mix. The Aldens looked at each other. Miss Chase straightened herself. That's quite enough, Ezra. I'll have you know that the Aldens are completely responsible for getting Mabel's books, and I should say my books, in perfect order. Just take a look at those tables out there. There's not a book damaged or out of place. Hmm, Mr. Bendry said, making one of his favorite sounds. I simply can't hire you if you're not willing to work with the Aldens, Miss Chase informed the old man. I plan to repay their grandfather for investing in the shop. I need plenty of help. Mr. Bendry seemed about to leave but changed his mind. All right, but just keep these kids out of my hair until Saturday. I'll price the books out in the courtyard. They can work in here. I agree you need peace and quiet to do your job, Miss Chase said, so here's what we can do. The children need some fun. I'd like to take them for a little sightseeing today, and part of each day they're here. But we don't need to go sightseeing, Jessie said. We like helping with your shop just as much. Honest. Miss Chase smiled. Now, Ezra, how can you resist this lovely family? Hmm, Mr. Bendry repeated. He was interested in books, not children. I guess, hmm, means the arrangement suits you, Miss Chase asked. Hmm, Mr. Bendry answered. Okay, children, Miss Chase said. You've done plenty for today. I want you to take a break and go over to the French market for milk and beignets. Before Mr. Bendry gets started, go out to the book tables and choose any books you've had your eyes on. They're yours. Choose any books you'd like, Mr. Bendry shouted, not mumbling at all now. There might be something here worth hundreds or even thousands of dollars. You can't mean they can choose any books. Miss Chase folded her arms. That's exactly what I mean. Henry picked up some books from the mystery table. These are by far my favorite writers, he said, holding up two mysteries. Olivia Chase. Same here, Jesse said, holding up two other Olivia Chase mysteries. Benny found an old copy of the boy's handbook. Is this worth a lot of money, Mr. Bendry? Hardly, Mr. Bendry sniffed. Every boy your age had a copy years ago. They're as common as yesterday's newspaper. Benny held onto the nice old book all the same. What about you, Violet? Don't you want to choose anything, Miss Chase said. Thank you so much, Miss Chase, Violet said softly, but I'm happy with my fairy tales. Fairy tales? What fairy tales? Mr. Bendry asked Miss Chase. Violet held out her copy of The Little Mermaid. Can you tell if this is worth anything? It's part of a box set. Mr. Bendry's eyes widened, and he reached out to examine the book. Worth something? If that's what I think it is, it's... The old man stopped talking. It's practically worthless. Violet bit her lip and hugged the books tightly. It's not worthless to me. I'm getting to keep the whole set next to my bed so it doesn't get sold by mistake. Keep out one book for now, okay, Violet? Jessie suggested. That way we'll have something to read if we sit in the park later. Violet nodded and disappeared upstairs to put the rest of the set away. Miss Chase saw how Mr. Bendry had upset Violet. She guided him to the far end of the courtyard to get him away from the Aldens. I can't have you talking so sharply to these children, Ezra. But Mr. Bendry just wouldn't drop the subject. If you hire someone to fix a car, you don't give the car away before the mechanics opens the hood, Olivia. How can I do my work if you're giving away everything before I even start? Miss Chase calmly peeled back the plastic coverings over the book table. There are plenty of books for you right here, Ezra. I'll get you a notebook and some pencils so you can get started right away. Mr. Bendry is so grumpy, Benny told his brothers and sisters after they went back inside the bookshop. Miss Chase will calm him down, Jessie said. She knows what to do. Now let's put these buckets and sponges away, grab our backpacks, and go to the French market. Do we have to talk French at the French market? Benny asked as he finished cleaning up. All I know is French fries. Henry dumped two pails of water into a small sink in the back of the store. Don't worry, he said. I know what I want at the French market, Benny said. Those Benny things. Beignets, Violet said when she came back downstairs with everyone's backpack for their outing. They're yummy. Mmm, sounds good to me. Oops, Henry said when he stepped out onto the street and almost tripped. Here, Mrs. Chase's newspaper. Let's check for her ad. Henry opened to the classified section. He ran his finger up and down the columns of the job ads. Hmm, it must be in tomorrow's paper. Hey, wait a minute, Jessie cried. How did Mr. Bendry know about Mrs. Chase's ad for a book expert if it's not in the paper yet? Chapter 5, The Face in the Photograph the riverfront streetcar was jammed with people visiting. New Orleans, just like, New Orleans, just like the Aldens. 
Everyone seemed to be wearing a silly hat or carrying a colorful souvenir umbrella to shade themselves from the hot sun. New Orleans is just like a carnival, Violet said, holding on to the center pole of the streetcar. They seem to have little parades going on all the time. I'm so squished, I don't need to hold on to anything, Benny said. This straight car is so crowded. Just hang in there, Benny, Henry said. Miss Chase told us the French market is only a few stops down the line. As the streetcar rolled along, the Aldens tried to look at everything at once. Just a few feet from the tracks, the sidewalks were filled with the street musicians, food carts, artists painting portraits of tourists, and people buying trinkets from sidewalk stands. The Aldens could hardly wait to join in. Jackson Square, Jackson Square, the conductor called out when the streetcar finally came to a stop. Does everyone have everything? Jesse asked. The younger children felt for their backpacks. The Aldens liked to carry around whatever they might need on their outings. Cameras, books, sketch pads, and snacks in case they got hungry, which they always did. Everything's still here, but kind of smashed, Benny said. He looked into his backpack to make sure his cowboy wallet with his new book and his box of raisins were safe and sound. My sketch pad and coin purse are here, but wait, Jesse, look at your backpack, Violet cried. The flap came untied. Without even checking, Jessie ran alongside the streetcar to see if anything had fallen from her backpack. Wait, she called out to the conductor. But the riverfront streetcar had pulled away. Too late, Jessie said. She put her pack down on a sidewalk bench. I'm sure I tied the flap down tight before we left. Jessie emptied her backpack on the bench. Let's see if I still have everything. Here's the street map, the thermos, my address book, my camera and wallet, my mystery book, what else did I have in here? Oh, good, your book is here, too. She picked up the little mermaid that Violet had stuck in there for reading later on. With that, Jessie repacked everything and closed the flap. When she put down her pack on the bench, she could check the map. Now, let's see where we are. According to the map, the French market and the cafe Miss Chase told us about should be right in front of us. Let's just follow that nice smell, Benny said, sniffing the air. The other children took a deep whiff, too. A wonderful scent of fried dough, chocolate, and coffee floated around them. Hmm, it's coming from over there, Violet said, as the children stood on their tiptoes to see over all the people crowding the big square. Then let's go, Benny said, pulling on Jessie's arm. Jessie folded the map and bent down to put it away. Oh no, she cried, my backpack's gone. The children looked high and low around the bench and retraced a few steps, but the green pack back backpack was gone. Wait. Jesse, look at the woman over there, Henry told Jesse. Isn't that your pack dangling from her arm? Jesse didn't take the time to answer. With the other children right behind, she chased after the woman through the crowd, never taking her eyes off the backpack. When Jesse finally caught up, she tapped the woman's shoulder. Excuse me, she said all out of breath. When the woman turned around, the children all cried at once, Sarah Dackle! Jesse spoke first. Sarah, is that my backpack you're holding? I left it on a bench so I could read a map. When I turned around, it was gone. Why, why, yes, I took it. I, I mean, I saw it lying there on the bench back there. I was going to see if there's a lost and found office nearby. Here, take it. Jesse took the green backpack and slipped her arms into the shoulder straps. Whew, that was careless of me. Thanks. Without even a you're welcome, Sarah Deckel disappeared into the crowd. Boy, she didn't seem too happy to give you that back to give that back to you, Henry said. I mean, if she was going to the lost and found, like she said, she should have been pleased you turned up so soon. Maybe she wasn't going to the lost and found, Violet said. Maybe she wasn't going to give it back. I'm just glad I found it, Jesse said. Now, can we go eat at that good smelling restaurant over there, Jesse? Benny asked. It says cafe. I know that means coffee, but I hope they have plain old chocolate milk too. It's called Café du Monde, Benny, Violet asked, taking Benny by the hand. It means the People's Café. Benny pulled Violet. Well, I'm a people, so let's get going. The children found a table for four in the open-air café. I'll get us some of those beignet donuts for all of us while you hold the table, Henry said. Can I get some money from your wallet, Jessie? Jessie took out her camera and handed Henry the backpack. I just know, love New Orleans, Jesse said. I'm going to try out the new instant camera Grandfather gave me for my birthday. Jesse stepped back and snapped a picture of Benny making a silly face while Violet giggled at him. The photo only takes a couple of minutes to develop, Jesse said. It's almost ready. Jesse pulled hard and a photo slid out of the camera. Everyone watched closely as a picture developed right before their eyes. Here I am, here I am, Benny said, excited to see himself appear as if by magic in the photo. 
Sure enough, there was Benny's silly face and Violet laughing at it. Fried beignets coming up, Henry said a few minutes later when he returned with a tray of donuts. Pretty soon, the plate of beignets in front of the Aldens was a plate of crumbs. You'll never guess who was in line with me, Henry said when he had finished eating. Sarah Deckle. She was right behind me. It's so crowded. I don't see her anywhere, Henry, Violet said. Do you, Jesse? Me neither, Jesse said, turning her head this way and that. I guess Sarah Deckle likes those special donuts, too. The children left the cafe and went out to Jackson Square. Stand by that statue of Andrew Jackson on his horse, Jessie said. She arranged Henry and Violet on either side of Benny. Then she stepped back, trying to get everybody in the picture, including the huge bronze, ho bronze horse and its rider. Who's Andrew Jackson, Benny asked Henry as he tried to talk and smile at the same time. A war hero from a long time ago during the Battle of New Orleans, Henry said. Got it, Jessie said. She pulled out the instant photo and waited for it to develop. A few minutes later, the picture was ready. Oh no, Jesse laughed. Look, I cut off the horse's head and Andrew Jackson in the photo. That's okay, Henry said to Jesse. It takes a while to get used to a new camera. We have lots more places to see in New Orleans, so you'll get plenty of practice with your picture taken. Ten pictures later, the Aldens collapsed in a little park overlooking the Mississippi River. Whew, sightseeing is a lot of work, Henry said, stretching himself on a patch of green grass along with the other children. It sure is, Jesse agreed. I brought along a small thermos of lemonade. We'll share it. The children cooled off with small sips of lemonade while they watched all the river boats arriving and departing on the river. Jessie snapped her last picture of the busy scene. Can I see? Can I see? Benny looked over Jessie's shoulder at the instant picture developed. Here, I'll spread out all the pictures we took, Jessie said. She arranged the photos in rows on the grass so everyone could get a good look. Henry chuckled as he studied the pictures. Gosh, Penny, you made a silly face in every single picture, even at that old New Orleans cemetery we visited. I like making faces, Benny said. Hey, there's another face in every picture, but it's not a silly one. The children leaned in to get a better look. It looks like Mr. Phillips, Violet cried. He's in the picture Jesse took at the cafe, then next to the horse statue, and here in the cemetery. Doesn't that also look like him in the shot of the dock you just took? You're right, Violet, Jessie said. Let's see if the person is still down there in case it is Mr. Phillips. Some of these pictures are a little blurry. The children raced down to the riverboat dock, but by the time they got there, the last boat had pulled away, taking with it all the people in Jessie's photo. Chapter 6, The Shadows Know. I'm so full I can hardly walk up these stairs, Benny said as the children climbed up to Miss Chase's apartment. And guess what? I'm not even hungry. That jumble dish we had for dinner sure filled me up. You mean jambalaya, Violet said. Jessie stepped into the apartment first. It's so dark in here. Miss Claire was nice to leave the door unlocked, but I sure wish we had left a light on. I can't see a thing. She must have gone to bed early. Henry felt around in the dark for a light switch and flicked it on. Hey, what's that? He pointed to a crumpled note lying near the front door and smoothed it out. He read it aloud. Dear Aldens, I hope you've had a wonderful day and evening out in New Orleans. I went out to dinner too. I have locked the door. I'll be back around 10 o'clock. I have my key, so be sure to lock up when you get home. Good night, all. Olivia Chase. Henry lowered his voice to a whisper. We'd better go back out. Come along, Violet. You too, Benny, Jesse whispered. Thinking about the cozy cot on the sleeping porch, Benny wasn't too happy about turning back. Why can't we go in? You shouldn't go into a house if the door is unlocked when it shouldn't be. There might be a burglar inside. Miss Chase said she locked the door, Jessie said. She took Benny by the hand and led him back downstairs and into the courtyard. Let's go out to the street and find a phone booth. It can't hurt to call the police to make sure no one is prowling nearby, Henry said. There's something strange about Miss Chase's apartment being unlocked. Just yesterday, the courtyard was unlocked when it wasn't supposed to be. Henry unlocked the courtyard gate and the children stepped onto the sidewalk. Then Benny saw someone step from the shadows of the bookstore doorway. Look, Benny pointed to a figure who darted down the street. I think that person just came out of the bookstore. The children ran to the shop doorway. Jesse pulled and pushed the door, but it wouldn't budge. When everyone looked down the street again, the shadow had vanished. Benny, are you sure you saw someone come out of the shop? Jesse asked. Benny scrunched his forehead. It was so dark, I couldn't see. I couldn't even tell if it was a she or a he. The children heard footsteps on the sidewalk. They belonged to Miss Chase. Are you just coming home too? She said, surprised to see the Aldens. You must be tired out. Let's get you off to your bed after a long day. 
But, but, Violet began, we think there was a prowler in the bookshop or in your apartment. The back door was unlocked and your note was bunched up on the floor. And know what else, Beanie broke in? A person jumped out of this doorway, but then disappeared. Henry was just about to call the police. Even in the dim street light, the children could see that Miss Chase looked worried. She checked up and down the street and inside the bookshop windows. You children did just the right thing. Calling the police is a good idea. I'll make the call. Less than five minutes later, a cruiser arrived in front of the bookshop. Two police officers got out carrying flashlights. We got your call, Miss Chase, one of them said. First, let's check out the shop. With that, the police examined the bookshop door lock. Well, it doesn't look forced or anything. Can you unlock it, Miss Chase? Do you see anything missing or disturbed? One of the police officers asked Miss Chase when they got inside the shop. Not that I can tell. You see, we've been unpacking books and cleaning and throwing things out, she explained. Everybody's been so busy. If someone touched or took anything, it would be hard to tell. The police led everyone out of the courtyard and flashed their lights up and down the brick walls and book tables. How about out here? Is everything in order? Miss Chase sighed. Again, it's impossible to say, officer. Everything looks fine. The children said they found my apartment unlocked. I'm sure I locked it before I left. Everyone trooped upstairs to check the apartment. Henry handed the police officer Miss Chase's crumbled note. Maybe somebody saw this on the door and somehow got into the apartment when they figured out no one was here. We saw a person run from the bookshop doorway when we went out to the front sidewalk, Jesse added. Maybe the person went up to the apartment, down the stairs into the bookshop, then out the front door to the street. Man or woman, the police officer asked. It was too dark to tell, Henry explained, and the person was halfway down the block by the time we put two and two together. Sorry. The two officers turned on the lights and led everyone through the apartment. Just walk through and tell me if you see anything out of place since you left, one of the officers advised. Miss Chase and the Aldens checked each room. Nothing seemed disturbed in any way. The drawers were all shut. Miss Chase's jewelry box and silverware were neatly in their places. Even Benny's stuffed animal, stockings, was propped up on the cot on the sleeping porch exactly where Benny had placed him that morning. We'll cruise around the block a few times during the night, one of the officers told Miss Chase, just in case. Good night. Thank you for coming, Miss Chase said. No problem, one of the police officers said. Often kids see things that turn out to be nothing, and everybody forgets to lock their doors once in a while. Why, if I had a dollar for every time someone called up, Good night, officer, Miss Chase said this time a little more firmly. The police didn't believe us, Benny said after they had gone, just because we're kids. Miss Chase patted Benny's hand. Well, I believe you, Benny. I can see the police have made up their minds that I have left my apartment unlocked. We'll just have to be extra careful about keeping our eyes and ears open to see if there really is someone snooping around here. We'll be very busy with the book sale and all, but that would be a good time to be on the lookout. I learned lots of detective tricks from your books, Jesse said. We can try them out first thing in the morning. How about tonight, Benny said, suddenly as wide as wake as could be. Aren't you tired, Miss Chase asked, smiling at Benny's liveliness. Me tired, Benny said. I've never tired when there's a mystery to solve. I want to find out if somebody's following us around. Well, I'm ready for bed, Miss Chase said. Good night. Where do we start, Violet asked Henry and Jesse after Miss Chase left. Let's check the bookshop again, then the apartment, Henry suggested. Where are you going, Benny? The stairs to the bookshop are down the hall. You'll see, Benny said with a big smile. Wait for me, okay? When Benny came back, he was carrying a small white and pink can of baby powder. Where did you get that, Violet asked. From the bathroom. It's for dusting for paint fingerprints. When Jesse reads me Miss Chase's books, the detective always uses powder to look for fingerprints where the bad guy was. Henry smiled at Benny. That works okay in books, but the bookshop will be covered with so many fingerprints from all the customers, we'd have to stay in New Orleans our whole lives before we could check out each print. Oh, well, Benny said. I'll go put it back in the bathroom. Wait, Violet said. Then she bent down and whispered something in Benny's ear. Goody, Benny cried, leading the way downstairs. When Jesse unlocked the inside door of the bookshop, Benny raced over to the front door. He sprinkled the powder on the floor. When he was done with that, he sprinkled more powder on the window sills. Jesse smiled at Benny. I bet Violet told you about how Miss Chase's detective used to put down powder to see if anyone returned to the scene of the crime and the streetcar mystery. Good work, Benny. The children checked the bookshop carefully for any signs of a prowler. I can't remember what was over here and what was over there since this morning, Jesse said. 
after about a half hour of checking the room inch by inch. We moved everything around so much. Henry put down one of the books he'd been examining from a box of books in the corner. He yawned. We ought to call it a night, Henry said, and start looking again in the morning. There's one more thing we can do, Jesse said, handing Benny and Violet some sheets of paper from a notepad. Tear these in tiny pieces and hide them in different places, inside some of the books that are left and in those boxes of odds and ends. I know, Benny cried. Those little pieces will fall out if someone picks up stuff with the paper scraps inside. Then we'll know for sure if somebody touched anything. Neat. The Aldens went around hiding the small paper scraps in as many places as they could. As soon as they were done, they went upstairs to get ready for bed. Jesse went over to tuck Benny under his covers. Would you like me to read you one of Violet's fairy tales? Benny's answer was a big yawn and lots of eye rubbing. He hugged stockings, then flopped back on his cot. No stories tonight. I'm too tired. Chapter 7. A Suspect Turns Up Wake up, sleepyheads, Jesse said the next morning. Jesse tickled Violet's and Benny's feet. Stop it, watch, Violet mumbled. Still dreaming, she thought she was back in Greenfield where the family dog Watch liked to wake up the children one by one. Jesse laughed. It's not Watch, silly, it's me. No wonder you're both so tired. I heard one of you get up during the night. Violet finally opened her eyes. She pulled the covers over her head to keep the light out. That was Benny who got up. Did not, Benny protested. Did too, Violet said. Violet sat up on her cot. Then I guess you were sleepwalking. I heard you. Benny had no idea what Violet was talking about. I didn't get up, but I think I heard somebody too. Maybe it was Henry. It wasn't me, Henry said. I slept like a rock last night. We better hurry up and get ready, Jesse said. Mr. Bendry will arrive any minute to finish pricing the books, and the painters are coming today. Can we go down to the shop right now? Benny asked. Maybe somebody left footprints or fingerprints in the baby powder or dropped some of those pieces of paper we hid all over the place. Henry said, I've already checked the shop. If anybody was snooping there last night, they didn't walk on the floor or touch anything. The only prints down there now are the ones we made last night. Darn, Benny said. Henry had another idea. Don't be too disappointed. We can try some other detective tricks. How would you like to shadow any suspicious people we see today? Benny liked this new idea very much. Like they do in Miss Chase's books? Goody. Jesse laughed. That's if we can find someone to follow, Benny. Now shadow me out to the kitchen for breakfast. Jesse and Benny played a tracking game, but it didn't go very well. Benny tried to follow his sister down the long apartment hallway, but whenever Jesse turned around, Benny bumped smack into her. What are you children laughing about so early in the morning, Miss Chase asked. Jesse could hardly stop giggling. Benny's trying to shadow me, but he keeps bumping into me instead. Well, shadows are attached to people, so that's why I stayed close to Jesse, Benny said. Anyway, we're going to follow any suspicious people we see. Maybe one of them is the person who ran down the street last night. Miss Chase loved Benny's plan. Well, let me give you a few tracking trips. First, you don't want to stay so close to the person that you bump into them. Just tiptoe a few feet behind or nearby. Not too close and not too far. What if the suspect sees me, Benny wanted to know. You can pretend to be doing something else, Jesse said. Tie on your shoe or something like that. Miss Chase looked very pleased. You children seem to know my books inside out. I'm sure if anyone is up to something around the Aldens, he or she won't get away with it for long. You've learned all my little mystery tricks. Now, all you need is a suspect. Speaking of suspects, Miss Chase, Jesse said, we suspect someone was following us around yesterday when we went sightseeing. Let me get my backpack and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Jesse ran back to the sleeping porch. As she was leaving, she saw someone in the courtyard. It was Miss, Miss, Miss Mr. Bendry. Good morning, Mr. Bendry, Jesse cried out in her friendliest voice. My brothers and sister and I will be right down in a minute to help you out. She waved at Mr. Bendry, but he wasn't in a waving mood. He's always so crabby, Jesse said to herself as she walked back to the kitchen. He even pretended not to see me. So let's see what you children were up to in New Orleans yesterday, Miss Chase said when Jesse spread out her photos on the table. Ah, what a nice shot of the Café du Monde. All that's missing are the beignets. That's because we ate them all, Benny said proudly. Miss Chase picked up another photo. I see you visited the cemetery. And you know what, Violet asked in a quiet voice. We saw a funeral procession and a small band playing music. People waved to us to walk behind the band in the procession too. Isn't that strange? No, Miss Chase explained. 
People down here find the music and the funeral processions a comfort to them when a person dies. It's okay for strangers to join them. Miss Chase went through Jessie's photos one by one. Suddenly, she was perfectly still. Is something the matter, Miss Chase? Violet asked. Miss Chase said, I just noticed something strange about these pictures, that's all. Benny could sit quiet no longer. I know, I know. You saw Mr. Phillips, too. That's what we saw when we looked at all the pictures together. You children are even better detectives than I thought, Miss Chase said. Wait just a second. Miss Chase went out to the living room and poured out something from her desk. When she came back to the kitchen table, she had a large magnifying glass in her hand. Let's get a closer look. Now there's no mistaking that this is Mr. Phillips, Henry said when he looked through the magnifying glass. The question is, why was Rex Phillips following you, Miss Chase asked. Did he come up to you at all, wave or say anything? Jessie shook her head. We were so busy having a good time, we didn't notice him at all until we looked at the pictures. The only person we ran into that we knew was Sarah. Sarah Deckel? Miss Chase cried. Where did you see her? Near Jackson Square, Jessie explained. It was kind of strange, too. I put down my backpack on a bench so I could read my map, and my backpack disappeared. Henry broke in. Then we saw Sarah Deckel walking up ahead with Jessie's backpack. She said she was on her way to the lost and found to turn it in. And you know what, Benny asked. She didn't even seem glad that Jessie turned up. Miss Chase took off her glasses and seemed to be thinking. Finally, she spoke. Was everything there when you got it back from Miss Deckel? Yes, Jessie said. Kleenex, a small thermos, my camera, my wallet, and my Violet's little mermaid book. She would brought it along to read. Suddenly, Violet said, I'm going to put the little mermaid back with the other books. Violet ran up to the sleeping porch. She was back in a couple of minutes. The rest of the fairy tales are missing, Violet cried out. When was the last time you saw them, Miss Chase asked the children. I don't remember, Jessie said. I'm not sure either, Violet added. I gave Jessie the Little Mermaid to bring along when we went out yesterday. I put the rest of the set by my bed, but I can't remember when I saw them last on the night table. You mean they disappeared last night, Henry asked. Benny crinkled his forehead. Or maybe while we were having breakfast this morning. Jessie thought of something else. She leaned over the balcony. Mr. Bendry, Mr. Bendry, she called down. Why are you calling Mr. Bendry, Benny asked. He was here just a few minutes ago, Jessie answered. Maybe he saw someone coming up the stairs to the sleeping porch. Or maybe, Henry said in a low voice, Mr. Bendry was the someone who came up to the sleeping porch. Guess what, Benny asked. Now we have a suspect. So I hope you all enjoyed uh, the additional chapters of the Boxcar Children, the Mystery Bookstore. These were chapters four uh, through seven. Come back next week uh, to hear the final chapters where we finished the book. So I hope you all have a great week and remember to be kind and I'll see you next week.